Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the official Nerd Talk channel. My name is Tyler, aka Mind of a Nerd, joined by my co host AJ Reacts. And we are back for another episode of Originals vs. Remakes, continuing 31 days of October Halloween spooky season. And we are continuing the OVR series for this month. Very excited. And today we are talking about a absolute classic in the Friday the Night. A terrible Dracula impression, but <laughs> fright the night indeed. Uh, Welcome this is one for real. I was very excited to do. I, I'm more excited for the next one we're gonna do, but I was very excited for this one to do nonetheless. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Starting with the original Fright Night released in 1985, directed by Tom Holland, not Spider Man, and he is the director of. This movie, he directed the original Child's Play, which is amazing, by the way. He also wrote uh, those two movies, and he wrote Psycho 2, which is not a bad movie. It's pretty okay for a movie called Psycho 2. And it tells the story of this teenager who notices these neighbors moving in, doing weird, suspicious things, and suspecting that he's possibly a vampire. So I was, I, I watched this movie for the first time, what, a year ago? I think it was a year ago. Uh, I watched it with uh, AJ. This is one that, again, just like The Ring, it kind of flew under my radar. And I was like, I've, I haven't seen really that many vampire movies. You know, I do, I still feel like I haven't. I've seen this one, um, Lost Boys, and that, that's really, uh, Abigail too. Um I think you're forgetting uh, uh, a saga of films. Uh, <laughs> I think you're forgetting a saga of films. You better hold on tight, spider monkey. <laughs> anyway. Um, I still have not seen like 30 Days of Night and uh, Daybreakers is the other one. I, I want to yeah. see that one. Um, so... This is like the one that everyone's like, this is the definitive vampire movie. You got to watch this one. So uh, Sony released a 4K Steelbook last year. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get that. That the Steelbook is great. And I was like, I want to sit down and watch this movie. I absolutely love this original movie. I think it is so much fun. And the thing that works the most about this movie is... The fact that it is making fun of itself the whole time. This movie is the epitome of taking like all the different vampire tropes and just making fun of them. Like there's a scene in this movie where our main character, he somebody goes into his room. This dude has cloves of garlic all over his room, and he's like hammering wooden stakes. It's like, yes, that's something I would do if I suspected my neighbor was a vampire. You know, like. I, and, the, you know, they make fun of the crosses and the holy water and the sunlight. It is just, it's so funny, but it works. That is why this movie works. The movie never is taking itself seriously. Is it scary? Yeah, it, it's spooky. It has its, like, gnarly things in it. But it it works because it's so silly and over the top. You know, um, our characters, I love them so much. Uh, Peter Vincent is the GOAT. I love Peter Vincent, right, um, Charlie Brewster. You got to love him. And then there <laughs> is Jerry Dandridge, <laughs> the most underrated horror villain probably ever. Agreed. This dude is like never talked about. And I cannot for the life of me understand why. And he's not even like that scary. He is a cool bad guy. And that's what works. He's so cool. He does, He's not trying to be intimidating. He's just walking. And you're like, oh, my God, get away from him. Like, <laughs> you know, he's eating an apple. Oh, my God, get away from him. He's eating, he's an, eating apple. an apple. Like, you know, <laughs> but it works. Oh. And he's so good. And I love Chris Sarandon in this role. He's so good in this movie. Practical effects, people. We have been preaching practical effects on this channel since we started this series. And when I tell you that this movie, along with Don Carpenter's The Thing, has probably the best special effects of all time, it is not even a question. The Every single effect in this movie, minus maybe one, where there's a bat flying and you can tell it's not practical. Yes. 
other than that one, and it's not even long, it's five yeah, seconds. It's yeah. Every freaking effect in this movie is flawless, and that's why the movie works because it is really happening. That's why it works so well, and that's why the, the other movie we're gonna talk about in a second doesn't work that well. But this movie, it's oh, it feels so real, and I love it. Ever since I've seen it, this is a constant rotation in my house for October. AJ, what are your thoughts on the original Fright Night? So you covered a lot of my thoughts on Fright Night. Um, but when when I first saw Fright Night, it was I was in high school, I believe, like or right after high school. It was the time where I was going to the library a lot and looking at the movies and checking out a lot of movies and borrowing borrowing them. And just watching tons of movies. And I was like, oh, Fright Night. I was kind of getting into horror. I wasn't really that much into it. But Fright Night, you know, hey, sounds kind of cool. Um, and I loved the poster. I loved the, you know, image of the poster. And I was like, okay, I don't even really know what this is about. Let me put it on. And I instantly loved it. Um, it is very 80s. I feel like it's a very 80s film um, it get, it has that aesthetic, that style, um, and, you know, the characters, they feel very 80s as well, uh, especially Evil Ed. He's, like, really corny, cheesy. Rooster. Rooster you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's a very 80s, and it's kind of like a, a time capsule horror film, but it, it still works today. Um, and I, I really dig this film. I... I enjoy uh jerry dandridge uh chris Aran as jerry dandridge a lot in this film like tyler was saying this is a very underrated horror villain uh which he was talked about more i always have a question about the towards the end of this movie i don't know if we will get into it later but um i always have a question about towards the end of this movie but other than that i love this film it is a film that's in constant rotation pretty much year round for me. Like I watched this movie and when they announced the 4k and the steel book, I was like, that's a day one. That's not even a question. It's a day one. So um, yeah, I love this film. Fun fact about this movie. The bouncer in the bar is the leader of the biker gang in Friday the 13th part three. I saw that. I was like, that's the guy from Friday the 13th part three. I was like, that's hilarious. Moving on to the remake from 2011 titled Fright Night. I get, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Fright Night 3D. Yeah, man. After I said no more 3D remakes after Piranha. <laughs> the last one, please. <laughs> All right. Fright Night 3D 2011 was directed by Craig Gesselepi. I probably pronounced that wrong. He directed I, Tonya, which is interesting, directed Cruella, and is going to be directing uh, Superman Woman of Tomorrow, which is interesting. Essentially, it tells mostly the same story to where this kid is living next door, and he suspects that, you know, weird things are happening, and he's suspecting he's a vampire, and you gotta figure it out, you know? So... I watched this movie for the first time last year with um, AJ, um, and I wasn't really excited to watch it because, like, two things. One, it, this was the year of remakes, or the time of remakes, to where they were just banger, bang, bang, bang. They were coming, like, over and over and over again, and it was a 3D remake. Um, the one positive, this is probably the best. 3D horror movie we've talked about on OVR. The, the bar is right there, but <laughs> <laughs> this is the best 3D horror movie we've talked about bar none. I, I do like this movie. I will say I like this movie. Uh, there is one major chokehold that's holding this movie back, and I'll talk about it in a second, but um, I think the performances all around are, are pretty good. Um, you got um, Colin Farrell playing Jerry. Which it, it's I'm I'm not a big Colin Farrell guy if I, I'm gonna be honest I like him a lot as the Penguin, um, but mostly everything I've seen him in he's kind of just you know whatever. But here he's, he, he's, he's completely he, transformed in the as the Penguin yeah. though he's not like Absolutely. himself at all. Um, but here he he's pretty good. He does a pretty good job. There there is one little negative that I have with him. I'll talk about it in a second. But I do think for the most part he does pretty good. Um, Anton Yelkin, rest in peace. I thought he was a great 
uh, lead for this movie. He actually kind of reminds me of Tom Holland in this movie. And I was watching it. I was like, he kind of reminds me of like, not Peter Parker, but just more Tom Holland. That That's the vibe I was getting from him. Um, got David Tennant in this movie. So much fun. Such a fun version of Peter Vincent. And if you were going to change Peter Vincent, this is how I would have liked them to change him. Uh, Tony, Tony Collette, very good in this movie. As always, I don't think I've ever seen anything where she's bad. Um, and then Evan Jim Poot, she she's pretty good in this too. Um, I think the movie does keep the the fun vibe of it. I don't think it, it it might take itself a little bit more seriously, but it it still has that fun, like making fun of itself vibe to it. Um, the one major negative of this movie, it's a three D remake. Why is that a negative? Because we have CGI, folks, and it is horrendous, ladies and gentlemen. The CGI in this movie is deplorably bad. And, you know, when you're remaking a movie with such practical effects, you're going to suffer from that. Just look at, it's not a remake, but look at the thing from 2011. Instead of going practical, what did they do? They CGI'd everything, and everyone was like, this looks horrible. It, it does. It looks really bad. Um, ironically, that came out in 2011, too. Um, but it, it looks really bad, and it takes me out of the entire third act of this movie. And it's a shame, because the third act of this movie, for the most part, I was like, damn, I might actually enjoy this more than the original third act, to be honest. But as soon as that CGI kicks in, whew, nope. Um... And then the one itty bitty negative I have with Colin Farrell is that I feel like in the beginning, before the movie kind of gets going, I feel like they tried too hard by making to try to make him creepy. I feel like he he does too much of like the brooding, like making weird faces at people. I was like, that's you don't need to do that. In the original, Jerry was just menacing by being a human being. In this movie, he's kind of well, looking at Tony Collette like, mm, "Hey, how you doing?" <laughs> oh, imagine oh, food. Hey, mm. it's like, okay, I guess <laughs> you know. Um, but other than that, it, it's it's a fun remake. It, it's a solid remake that if they had practical effects or better CGI, I think it would be like strong competition for this movie. Um, AJ, what are your thoughts on the remake? So I saw this movie in the theater. I was working at the movie theater at the time and I saw it in the theater and I actually really dug it when I watched it the first time. Um, and I didn't watch it since then until last year. And there was like a sale on the Blu-ray. So I was like, I might as well, you know, pick this up since I have the 4k of the original, might as well get the Blu-ray of the remake. and. My thoughts change a little bit. My score went down just a tad. Um, I think back when I watched it, I wasn't as bothered with CGI like like this. But there's no denying that the CGI here is not good. Um, so other than that, the movie is very solid. Like you were saying, the, the acting across the board is good. Uh, we got McLovin as Ed here, which is kind of hilarious to me. Um, but um, Peter Vincent, uh, David Tennant as Peter Vincent, very, very good choice for a casting choice. Yeah, like the, the small tweaks that they made to this film, which we'll talk about the differences and similarity soon. But the small tweaks that they did, I liked for the remake. Now, do I think that they're better than the original? We'll get into that later, but I did like the small tweaks that they did for this remake. Moving on to the similarities between the two, and um, the story, it, it's there are some things that they change here and there, but for the most part, it is the same to where um, Harley, he suspects, he suspects that uh, Jerry is a vampire, and he's trying to prove to everybody that he's a vampire, and then when he gets out that he's a vampire, that they have to try and take him down. That's mm -hmm. pretty much, you know, story how they get there is different you know in both versions um the characters are pretty much all the same there's one difference in in the remake that we'll talk about but um the characters that are in this movie they're all the same pretty much do they act the same no but 
you know, they are the same by name. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's pretty much it because yes. uh, everything else is mostly different. Mm-hmm. So moving on to the differences between the two. Um, I think one of the major ones that I'll, I'll start with, it, and it's not the one you think, is that Evil Ed's role is drastically changed in this movie. Yes, he and is. it's hilarious. I don't like Evil Ed in the original. I find him insufferably annoying. Um, and if they had made... If they the way he is in the remake in terms of his role and how limited he is in that movie, if that's how it was in the in the re- original, that movie would be like a five out of five to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting here like, damn, they must have known that Evil Ed was annoying because he's barely in this movie. He gets taken out pretty much in the beginning. And he doesn't show back up until the ending of the second act. Yeah, and and another thing that's different is in the beginning. Uh, Charlie doesn't believe that there is a vampire living next door. Mm -hmm. It's Ed that's telling him, like, yo, like, I know we're not really friends that much anymore. Like, they used to be friends in the past. We're not friends that much anymore, but you need to be warned about this. This dude is creepy over here. I don't know what's going on with him, but be warned. And and Charlie's like, "What? what are you talking about? And then Evil Ed goes missing, and they're like, oh, this might be something. You know, so yeah. I, I like that, that difference. That's um, another difference, too, is that they're not really friends in the remake, which uh, I kind of like that and kind of don't like I, I like it in the original how him, Ed and Amy, they're like, you know, they're a strong yeah. bond. Yeah. But it, I think as a change, it works. Um, yeah. Speaking it's, of Amy, th- this is a difference. Amy is like on another planet in the remake compared to the original in the original for those who have seen married with children she reminds me of darcy from married with children in the worst way possible she is so annoying in the remake she's doing things and she's not annoying she's trying to get the best out of charlie and i really like that a lot real quick going back to ed the way they use him in the beginning and he goes like m.i.a i the same type of thing happens in the the original, but it happens later on in the film. So in the original, we get Evil Ed and Jerry is like, he, he turns him, right? Mm-hmm. But he turns him into a werewolf. And I always have a question about how does Jerry turn this man to a werewolf? And they fix that in the remake that he actually comes, shows back up, but he is a vampire. Which makes sense because Jerry is a vampire, but that's a difference too. But the thing about the the werewolf is the practical practical effects are amazing for the mm-hmm. werewolf. But I just don't understand how it happens. So after I'm like, oh, the practical effects, but how does that happen? <laughs> that's how yeah. my thought process is with that. But that's a that's oh. a difference with Ed. A major difference about the remake: uh, Billy Cole is not in this movie. They removed him entirely. Oh. Yeah. When, and I, I think I, I love that dynamic in the original, but I think it works well enough in the remake to where like I'm not missing him. And that's to me at least that relies on them writing Colin Farrell so well to where he's like, Yeah, he's intimidating enough, he doesn't need a sidekick. Like he works, you know, fine. Yeah, with the with the the original though, I do have a question about Billy. Like, who is he? They never a- explain who he is. Or what he is, because uh-huh. there's a scene where he's just like melting into this goo, and we're like, "What is happening?" That we're like, is it, disgusting. <laughs> it's disgusting, it's and the disgusting. practical effects. The practical effects are awesome, and his bones like start tumbling yes, down the it's stairs. Nasty. You know? It's funny and it's nasty, <laughs> but we don't know any like what. That's another thing that's yeah. like, what? Okay, but. Uh-huh. Peter Vincent. Peter Vincent is like a whole different character, different Drastic character in, different. in both movies. So in the original, he hosts this. Um, it, it's kind of like uh, Tales from the Crypt, you know, something like that, to where it's like he's telling these spooky stories and, he, and he's, you know, doing it's these like a TV show. Stuff. Yeah. And he he goes, uh, Charlie goes to him and he's like, I need your help. Like, and, and he's like, all right, I'll entertain this kid, whatever. And then he finds out 
he when he sees his reflection, he finds out that like, he's actually a vampire. He's like, "No, I'm not helping you. This is ridiculous." I'm out. But then eventually he decides to help him, and he saves the day. Peter Vincent in the original is the goat. In the remake, he's like reminds me of Chris Angel. If anything, yes, he's definitely. like it's like a magic. I think, I think thing. it's a yes. It's like a magic thing. I think that it is a play on Chris Angel. I think it Chris is. Angel in 2011 that was like big. Like, mm-hmm. you know, so I could definitely see them doing I think they're that. making fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. He even wears, like, the eye makeup and everything. Yep. Um, and he he's basically this person that, you know, he does magic. He sleeps with chicks. And he's like, hey, you you do this, like, Fright Night type thing, right? Like, I, I need your help. And he's like, bro, go go somewhere. Leave me alone. Like, I, I'm not doing this. He's de- he's depressed, too. Like, he's like, uh, I don't know. He's not, not happy. Yeah. He's just like wallowing and depressed, and he's like, "Come on, you know." Um, Charlie's like, "Come on, help me, you know, help me with this. This is what you do, ain't it?" And he's like, "Nah, bro, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm not about it, you know." But um, another difference is that uh, his mom is like a drastically di- another drastically different character. So in the remake, his mom is kind of like in on it, and, and she's not annoying either. So like, she's not an idiot, like. In, in the remake, uh, in the original, she's a funny idiot, but she's, she's, an, idiot. she's an idiot. You know, she's, she she's just doing things, and she's like, "Oh my god, like, what are you doing?" At least in the hilarious to me. Yeah, it, it's oh my, it's so eighties. <laughs> in, in the remake, she's questioning whether or not Charlie is like sane, but at least she's like believing him a little bit. And then, um, obviously, you know, she's like she starts seeing it and that's another difference um i feel like she she gets in on it more in this movie Definitely. she actually gets into an a- action sequence with with um jerry and, and all that in a great car chase that's like it, it's like a one take it, it's yeah. pretty good that's some mm-hmm. good stuff also the the third acts are, are kind of different well not kind of they're, they're very different so in the original it's just um Peter and Charlie, they're trying to take out these two vampires. And then in the remake, there's like a lot of different vampires. And it, it's fun. It, it's a fun idea. It's just, again, it looks terrible. The idea. And, the concept is so much better than the execution. Here. Um, I actually think Fright Night Part 2, the, the original Fright Night Part 2, did this concept a little bit better. Um, Fright Night Part 2 is actually not too bad. It's a, it's a pretty fun uh, slasher sequel ish, um, but yeah, that that's a major difference, and it it doesn't they, it takes place like kind of under the house. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't take place in the basement in the, in the remake. Uh, also, in the original, he's keeping the. I don't think he keeps the girls hostage. I think he just you know sucks their blood and that's it. In the remake, he keeps them locked in these like you know rooms. Um, that sequence is also very fun when he has to get the girl out of the house. And he thinks he gets her out of the house. She runs into the sun like, poof! I was mm-hmm. like, oh! <laughs> it's yep. awesome. That That is awesome. It still kind of looks CGI heavy, but that, that's a great jump scare. Um, I think we covered everything pretty much. Uh, Moving on to what we think the definitive version is, and man, if that CGI was better, this decision would be harder. I, I like I seriously mean that because the remake it does a lot of what a remake should do. It makes the necessary changes but keeps the spirit of the original. What it didn't keep the spirit of was the practical effects, and they dropped the ball. The CGI is booty cheeks. So I have to say the definitive version is the original Fright Night directed by Tom Holland. I think it is astronomically better in terms of the effects. And it just, it feels like it's really happening. And that is the key when it comes to horror and just cinema in general. I want to believe that it's actually happening, even though it's a movie. Uh, When you give me all digital effects, it really, really takes me out of the movie. So um yeah, you got to make them good. If if yeah. if they're good then, you know, we just watch Pirates of the Caribbean and those effects are amazing. If they're good, they work. But yeah. 
you know, this doesn't look uh, right. Yeah. 1985, definitive, yes. beyond belief. AJ? So I love the concept of Fright Night. I love how it's like the, the neighbor, and you're like, I, I don't know if he's like killing people or if he's, you know, a vampire. We They do that in Rear Window. They do that in Disturbia, which is a very good movie, by the way, uh, underrated film. But I, I love the concept of this movie, and I enjoy both films a lot. I will have to go with the original being the definitive version, just because it, it's an easier watch for me for some reason. Like when I watch the remake, I kind of like get distracted here and there, and I don't know. But the original, I absolutely love. I love the characters, the actors, um, the aesthetic of it really adds to it as well. So I'm gonna have to say. The definitive version for me is the original. All right. That is going to do it for this episode of Originals versus Remakes. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on the bell for all notifications for future Nerd Talk videos and live streams. Also, follow our Instagram. The link is down below. The next episode of OVR will be for Evil Dead, which is without a doubt my most anticipated video because, spoiler alert, I love both of those movies. And that is going to be a very interesting OVR. VR because I like I said I love them both so picking them is like a parent picking their favorite child it's gonna be hard is it gonna be like total recall where you can't choose one I don't know maybe <laughs> we'll, we'll find out next week <laughs> um but yeah once again if you guys enjoyed this one please leave a like and subscribe to the channel we will see you on the next episode of OVR everybody